Hi everyone, my name is Noah and I was once caught up with drug abuse. Most of y'all might not know what it feels like to be under the influence of drugs. So today in this video, I'm going to take you on my journey. A word of warning, this video might be emotional and intense, but when we get to our destination, it will help you to think twice of touching drugs. Are you ready? Let's rewind back in time. I was just a young YouTuber who did videos at home who had just became famous from the Our Boys to Men franchise. I had so many fans and was so well loved by everyone. Everything I did wrong was funny and everything I did right was noble. I was so powerful and free. Nothing I did could ever affect me or my career, right? But I was wrong. So my friends and I were on an overseas trip and we stumbled upon this herb called weed. Some people call it cannabis, others call it ting tai. Some even call it kang kong. Now I heard a lot of stories about weed and whatever it does to your body. But I was still curious and just wanted to try it out. Nothing I did could ever be wrong, ma. Remember? So I lighted it up and smoked it like it was some golden elixir. And oh my god, it was the greatest sensation of happiness I've ever felt in my entire life. I've never felt so happy before. Everything to me was so funny and everything I ate was so delicious. And most importantly, I was conscious. Best part, the moment this entire sensation is gone, I felt very sleepy and the sleep was so, so good. I slept like a baby. Next thing I knew, I woke up to reality. I felt so lazy and I didn't even feel like walking. My friends had to drag me out. So as I carried on with my life in Singapore, it started to get boring. I started to miss that life-turning sensation and not getting to smoke weed suddenly felt weird for me. This was the feeling of temptation. This was the feeling of addiction. On a regular day, I started from smoking one to two joints, then three to four, and finally five joints a day, without fail, making it a total of 150 joints a month. I always do it alone in my room, so I didn't feel like I would get caught. This was a secret that I thought only I knew, until reality starts to come. Soon, I got pulled by a friend who somehow found out I was smoking weed. I got brought in for a urine test, which came out positive. So I was arrested and was escorted home for a house raid. My parents were shocked to see me in handcuffs. Noah, what happened? All I could say to them was, I'm sorry. It was the first time I actually felt uncomfortable going back home. And even so at the time, I still did not understand the impact of my mistakes until I finally woke up with her nine months in the detention barracks. You may think that you're prepared for this, but once the military court sentence verdict comes in, reality starts to hit you. The worst feeling was the first day in the detention barracks. It was nothing short of horrible. It felt like my whole world has been crushed down into this two meters confined space with walls. The silence was piercing and the thought of being locked away from everyone I loved and cared for in the world out there was just very heartbreaking for me. Can you imagine? I acted in an army team movie. I'm now serving army. And I'm now serving DB in army. This was so shameful until it's almost funny. And you think that I'm the only one who would deal with remorse but my parents also got deeply affected. They had to face the consequences of my actions, and yet they were still very encouraging and supportive. My baby missed you, son. <laughs> miss you a lot. You're so skinny. Do you eat well? Sleep well? Every time they visited me in DB, I would always see them cry. And it was also the first time that I saw my dad cry. You can do it. You're strong. <laughs> <laughs> For my friends, let's just say that before I went to DB, this was also a good opportunity to know who really cared for me. Some of them even reposted news about me on their social media, but none of them even texted or called me. And for my girlfriend at that time, 
She was so sweet and wrote letters for me with her lipstick on it. And she promised to wait for me until I got released. She tell you to forget about her, son. Just move on, okay? For my career, by then the whole world already had known that Noah Yap, popular young actor and YouTuber who can do nothing wrong, is now a drug abuser. Remember how divine and powerful that weed made me feel for five minutes because of my dumb curiosity? During my time in DB, I would often think to myself, how could I have done something so stupid and put myself in such a mess? What am I going to do when I come out? Who will still hire me? Because it's one thing for people to forgive you, right? But it's totally another struggle to get through when there are bad memories of you imprinted in society. I found myself literally at the lowest point in my life. Until something happened. As the saying goes, this too shall pass. Just when I was experiencing the peak of my lowest moments, my long-awaited first sign of hope finally came. I realised how fortunate I was to always receive a big stack of letters every now and then when I was in DB. And these were letters from close friends such as the boys and my parents. Let me read one out for you. Dear son, I know that this is a difficult time for you. It's not easy. Please know that you're not alone. And there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Don't give up hope. We miss you and know that you're not alone. Continue to persevere in walking out from the world of drugs. Only then it can lead you out, out of the wilderness. Do your best to focus on learning new things during your time in DB. We trust that fate has great plans for you when you make your comeback. We'll be waiting for you. Stay strong, my son. I love you. I didn't know how powerful a handwritten letter like this could help to weight off my addiction of drugs. This letter has helped me get out of the addiction. And not to mention, the regular counselling sessions from DB help to further reinforce emotional support for me. And to this day, my vow to never touch drugs again still remains. Since then, I decided that if I worked really hard and proved to the world that I've changed, I hope that the world will respond by giving me a second chance. This whole journey has been an emotional roller coaster ride with a lot of steep ups and downs. But it shaped me to a way that I never was before. A better person. If people around me haven't given up on me, it means that my existence on this earth does matter to others. So why should I be the one who let them down? A commitment not to consume drugs and having people around to support you is very important for you to snap out of the old lifestyle and transition into something new. One of the reasons why people repeat mistakes is because they feel alone and do not have enough support from friends and family to prevent them from doing this again. If you are ever tempted to try anything, your first thought should be, how will this affect my personal life, my career and my body? Secondly, will this let down my family and friends? And lastly, am I willing to pay a lifetime of guilt for that five minutes of fun? This is the high price of pleasure. <laughs>